Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, there may be some people joining in as we go, but uh, let's jump right in. So today we're going to be talking about boosting your chances of landing a remote job. So we'll talk about some of the pros and the cons to working remotely as a whole, uh, but then we'll talk about some ways that you can stand out and ways that you can showcase your skills in a way that's not only going to be appealing for employers in general, but specifically for employers who are looking for remote employees, which is uh, fairly similar to a regular hiring process, but there are a lot of different skills and experiences that can really boost your chances for landing positions that allow you to really work from anywhere. Uh, we may also touch on a couple of things that will assist you in working remotely, uh, maybe not necessarily full time, maybe your job allows you to work a little bit flexibly, but hopefully this will help you um, with that as well. So Let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, for those of you who haven't had a session with me or um, been to a webinar with me, uh, my name is Brett Ellis. I'm a career coach here with Udacity. I've been here since April 2019, so coming up on a year. Um, I really enjoy this job. I enjoy getting to coach and work with students from all around the world. Um, it definitely helps me develop as a professional, um, but I have been doing this kind of work really since I started my career. I went to school for for uh, K through 12 and higher education and really focused my path on the career services route. And so um, I've been doing this type of work for as long as, as, I, as I've been working full time. And the areas that I really focus on are personal branding, showcasing your impact and building your presence on LinkedIn. Those are kind of my areas of focus. Um, but today we're gonna be talking about remote working. And um, luckily I've had about a year's worth of experience doing this so I can share any advice around the job search or even if you have questions related to uh, performing well in a remote job or just staying motivated. And, and we'll talk on some of those things. I'll try my best to share my personal experience I want you all to hear it straight from somebody who's doing it so um, I like to keep it very transparent and honest and so I'll share some of my reflections as well so what we're gonna be talking about uh, today is uh, introduction we already did that and um, we'll talk about some benefits and challenges of working remotely when I was putting this presentation together um, I felt that there was something missing I think that there are so many news articles and headlines talking about remote work is amazing increase your efficiency your productivity allow people to work flexibly and while all of those things are extremely beneficial you don't oftentimes hear the downside of working remotely and so I want to share both the benefits and some of the challenges so that you know what you're getting into and you know realistically what expectations might be for you as a remote employee. Uh, then we'll talk about necessary skills to be competitive. So if you go, if we go through this section, you feel like there are some areas for you to improve. These are going to be some really high level skills that recruiters and employers look for specifically for remote work. Uh, we'll talk about how to showcase your candidacy on your application material. So how can I better apply for jobs or what can I put on my resume to make me more appealing for these types of roles versus a general role. We'll talk about that as well. Um, we'll talk about preparing for interviews because there are some tips and tricks that I have for you as it relates to that, whereas you may not necessarily be showing up in person. And so we'll talk about that and then some just some other things to think about. And then we'll end with a Q&A. So it'll allow you guys a chance to ask any questions that you might have. Um, I will do my best to monitor the chat as we go through. So if you have questions throughout the presentation, I'll try to get to those as they come, um, or at least at, at the end of that slide. Depending on how active the chat is, I may have to push some of those questions back to the end. But if you do have them, I don't want you to feel like you have to hold on to them until the very end if it's relevant to the conversation and you think it might actually assist some other students who might have similar questions, feel free to type that in the chat and I'll try to get to those as we continue to go throughout the presentation. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. I want some more feedback from you all. So I want to hear from you and you can put this all in the same message so I can see it. What do you think is the number one benefit and the number one challenge to working remotely? There are different studies that have shown different things, but I want to hear from you what you think are the biggest challenges um, as well as the biggest benefits. And I'll read a couple of those out loud. Uh, once I get those. Um, I know the 
experience of working remotely has really changed my perspective on it from before starting a, a lot of these things didn't make a whole lot of sense but then now that i'm in the thick of it i really understand what what um some of those challenges are specifically um so benefits no office politics that is true for the most part there's not a whole lot of you know it's mostly just focused on the work. There's not a whole lot of outside aspect of it um, that, that, that plays negatively into that. Um, challenge, you need to control your time by yourself. Time management is huge. That's a, a good hint into something that we'll be talking about a little bit. Um, biggest benefit, flexibility, absolutely. Um, challenge, not to abuse yourself in work. Okay, that's a good one. Um, not to work too much. That's a, a, a challenge that a lot of people don't think of. Um, no time no time with transportation yeah so you can completely eliminate your commute altogether if you know some people have to drive an hour plus to get to their job and back that's time out of your day that you could be spending doing other things um, you can work from anywhere um, and good internet service that is going to be necessary absolutely there have been a couple of times where i've done webinars at locations that didn't have great webinar service and we had to kind of troubleshoot in the middle of that so Let's see what else. Uh, benefit, I'm in a small town without industry that would hire for my position. Okay, so that's definitely going to be helpful. Um, challenges, collaborating with teammates who are in the office. Great points. Okay, no longer bus or car drives, right? Um, time management, getting stuff done, connecting with people despite the difference. Absolutely. So a lot of people are talking about the commute, and I think that that's becoming more and more of an issue, especially for bigger cities or people who are not located close to where they work. Um, remote work or telecommuting, as they will sometimes call it, um, is a great way to kind of get around that, that um, issue. Issue. Uh, somebody said reduce costs, which I'm sure is the benefit. And in the culture, I would say maybe that's you might have been talking about that a little bit more of a challenge. I think that you know creating a culture is extremely important from a leadership perspective. Um, that can definitely impact the way that you experience working remotely. Um, great. So these were all really great um, things that you all mentioned. Um, and somebody just lastly jumped in and said career growth. Um, so I don't know that we'll talk too much about that, but I'd love to. I'd love to if if uh, if, if you have further questions around that. I'd love to chat about that a little bit more in depth, maybe at the Q&A and how you feel like career growth might be a challenge with working remotely. Okay, so let's jump right in. Okay, so this is not, um, you know, this doesn't mean you got the right or wrong answer. This is from one study that Buffer does. Buffer is a company that uh, they, they've developed a social media management, digital marketing company. Um, I've used it personally for, you know, managing my Instagram pages and you can plan things out in advance, but they do a state of the remote report um, every year that I've seen um, in, the, in the last couple of years where they update this and it actually does change a little bit. So if you're interested, feel free to check out this report a little bit later. Um, but this is, kind of, this is kind of the results that they got from various different people who work remotely. Um, the biggest benefit is flexible schedules. So um, for me personally, I love this aspect of working remotely. There are some days where I have to go grocery shopping or go to the doctor's appointment and it's not always easy to go after like traditional work hours when everybody's going to those places and sometimes the bank is closed or you know there's there's sometimes issues that make it difficult and so some days I'll just go you know in at, at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. and then just work a little bit longer um, so it allows you to kind of be in control of your time and as long as you're getting your work done there's not really too much of an issue especially if you don't have um, a, a, a remote job where you have to monitor a chat or you have to um, receive phone calls and different things like that. Um, it allows you to be a lot more flexible. Um, working from any location is very cool. Um, I personally choose to work from home most of the time. Um, some days I will go to a co-working space um, here and sometimes I'll go to the public library which is literally right down the street if I just want to get out um, of the house. Uh, but I've also you know gone on trips to visit friends and worked remotely at their apartments while they were at work during the day. So, you know, that allows me to kind of travel and still work while I'm traveling. Um, and then you can see some of the other things, but some of the major benefits there are flexible schedule and working from any location, at least as reported from people who are working remotely. 
So let's talk about challenges and struggles. So somebody mentioned this unplugging after work. So I was shocked to see this as number one because the number two here was number one the year before. So loneliness was at the top, um, but now there, there are a lot of people who are saying that they have issues unplugging after work because they work from home. Oftentimes you have papers laying out um, next to the couch or you have your your work documents on the coffee table or you know you you just maybe you didn't you're not great with time management just yet and sometimes you do things and have to work a little bit longer to get things done so unplugging after work can be a big challenge for some people considering the fact that you're not actually leaving a physical location to go home um, sometimes that is the same location so it can be a little bit difficult uh, another one that a lot of people mentioned was collaborating and um, or communication uh, distractions at home is a big one so we'll talk about certain things to avoid when you answer kind of why you want to work remotely um, and then you can see some of these other things being in a different time zone I know somebody mentioned collaborating with distance can be difficult um, this area here is loneliness that's a really big factor that I don't think most people think about as they approach um, potentially working remotely. As I mentioned, that was at the top um, the year before. And I would say out of all of these, this is probably the area that I relate to most as a remote employee, um, especially when I work from home. You know, I'm, I'm talking to people all day, but it's usually um, coaching calls over the phone. So I'm not actually getting to engage with people face to face. And so some that sometimes I will go you know, almost the entire day without actually speaking with someone face to face. And for someone like me, that's difficult. Um, <laughs> I'm a big extrovert. And so I thrive off being around students. And so that's why I love opportunities like this, where I get to engage with multiple students at a time. Um, I would say if you if you could please avoid uh, annotating on the screen. Um, <laughs> that is could just be a little bit of a distraction so please avoid doing that but um yeah as i was mentioning that's probably the biggest area that i personally see um coming from you know my, my personal perspective um, a lot of people don't have that issue if you are going to um maybe work from a co-working space that can sometimes ease that um so you're working around other people maybe you've built relationships with some of those people um, but just something to keep in mind so now I want to hear from you. Jump back in the chat really quickly. This is going to be an interactive session. So I want to know what skills do you think employers look for when hiring remote teams? So you can avoid kind of some of those general skills for jobs in general, but what specific skills do you think are important for remote work? What do you think are the skills that employers are testing or checking for more than anything else? I'd love to, to see if you guys are on the right track. Uh, so somebody said experience, so relevant experience, I'm assuming. <laughs> communication is, is a big one. A lot of people have mentioned. What else? Um, communication is probably the top one. So you guys are right on it. Uh, friendliness. I haven't heard that one, but I could definitely see that being um, a skill that they look for, especially if your role is going to be customer facing. So if you're going to be talking with people on a regular basis, that can definitely play a factor. Um, so I see friendliness. Yes, uh, that is right. Kind of with that politeness, um, availability. Gotcha. Self-motivation. I think that's a great one. Um, organization. Yes, great one. Reliability, time management, articulate. These are all really good skills. So as you are thinking about some of these skills that are important, think about yourself. Like, how am I able to do this? How am I able to showcase this to employers if I was to get a question about one of these skills? Or how can I better showcase this on a resume when I'm applying for remote roles? Um, so somebody else jumped in and mentioned self-oriented to goals. So yes, being kind of a self-starter or being able to check your own progress and, and kind of be accountable for the work that you're doing. These are all really great um, skills and we'll talk about a lot of them. So thank you all for participating once again. So let's talk about some of the things that you all mentioned. Um, so communication is obviously by far probably the most important thing that employers are looking for when it comes to remote jobs. This, as we know, is a very important skill to have in general. But for working remotely, there are so many different things that go into the communication aspect of it that make it um, so much more important. 
So um, as I mentioned, it's one of the most important skills that they'll look for. So you can pretty much anticipate that they're going to ask you questions related to that. Um, your communication throughout the hiring process is also something that you may potentially be evaluated on. Um, I don't think that job seekers oftentimes think about that, but the way you perform as a job seeker or as a candidate for a position is a good indicator of how you might perform in that job. And so if an employer is emailing you or you're, um, you know, having phone calls and conversations like that, if you're lacking in communication from that perspective, it may, even outside of all the questions that you're answering, maybe a technical interview, outside of all the job-related things, how you go about that hiring process can also showcase to them how good of a communicator you are. Um, and, and I'm not talking about just putting on your resume, you know, great written and communi oral communication. That, that doesn't really say much. Um, you want to be able to back that up. So we'll talk about ways that you can do that. Um, be responsive. So be quick and clear with your responses. So one of the things that I recommend people do in general as you are job searching is potentially have an email that is designated specifically for that um, and have those notifications on. You know, I wouldn't recommend you throw it in with another one of your email addresses where you're getting notifications from your online shopping preferences and things that you're doing for hobbies. You know, you want to be able to monitor that. So as soon as you get um, um, an email or as soon as you get outreach from an employer, you see that quickly and you can respond quickly. Um, you also want to think about how how you are responding when you're receiving email communication from them or communication through other platforms. You shouldn't want to have to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If there are ways for you to address things all up front, maybe it's a longer email, but it helps you get things done quicker. Think about that as an option as well. Uh, this is something that I don't see people think about very often is the actual tools that you use to communicate in remote work and remote type positions. So obviously Zoom is something that, that we use with Udacity very frequently, um, not just for our webinars, but sometimes for our calls if the calling system is not working, um, but also just for team meetings. So Zoom is a very popular tool that a lot of companies use, especially for remote work. Slack is extremely helpful and extremely beneficial. Um, with, with our team, we almost do no email at all, um, which is I'm so grateful for. Um, in, in past positions, my inbox has been flooded with just things that I felt could have been handled through like an instant message or a quick phone call. And so being able to showcase your ability to use something like Slack and Zoom, those two are really um, very popular amongst uh, remote working communities. And also, even outside of remote work, these are great tools for you to learn how to use um, outside just for any job that you might be into. Um, also, the Google Suite. So you know, where a lot of people talk about, you know, I'm proficient in Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel. We all know that Google has their own kind of version of that as well, which is going to be used a lot more frequently because the, it allows for a lot easier collaboration. You know, you can go it go in and edit the same document that somebody else is working on. You can review things for uh, proposals and different things like that. So Google Suite is great. Um, and then uh, Trello is a project management tool that some companies use to track the progress of some of the things that they're working on. So if you have any experience with these types of platforms that may be something beneficial for you to include on a resume or talk about during an interview. So if you're sharing an experience, maybe use an experience where you had to use one of these tools as a way to communicate with your team. That can be really helpful. Um, and then someone did mention this before is, is experience. So past experiences working remotely. This doesn't have to be you working full time remotely. It, it could be, you know, maybe your office allows you to work uh, from home once a week and you can talk about your experience doing that and how that's helped you be more productive or helped you learn the skills that are necessary to working remotely. Uh, you can also share stories of like, you know, when my boss was away, or maybe you took on a leadership role when um, somebody was out of the office for a week or something like that to where it really encouraged you to, to work remotely or utilize um, the type of environment where you're not going to be centrally located. So maybe um, a work trip or something like that where you had to still get the work done, but you were in a different location. Um, those can be great experiences to talk about as well. So um, just in general, there, there are more that we're going to go through, but these are, are going to be really important to think about.
So the next thing is teamwork. And so I didn't see this a lot in the chat um, because it, 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 I think when people think about working remotely, they think of kind of being very isolated, um, which is part of it when we talked about loneliness. But I, I personally believe that teamwork is more important um, working remotely than it is over in person environments because you don't have easy access to, you know, pop into your, your coworkers office and say, Hey, did you get that? Or, Hey, how's that project going? Do you need any help? I would say that teamwork is even more important in a remote environment. So think about that as well. Um, you know, how you contributed to teams overall, um, at, in your previous work experience, how can you showcase that? Um, I know for, for, for me with, with the Udacity careers team, one of the things that I personally like to do is as I'm working and, and I notice different ways of being more efficient, I'll share those in our Slack channel. So if I can find a way to send emails more quickly or how to bookmark pages, sometimes I'll send that to the team just so that they have a better, um, if they're not already familiar with these strategies, they can do it so that we can all be a little bit more efficient in our job. Um, but think about ways that you've done that and, and, and helped your team improve. Um, and obviously examples where the work is a little bit more kind of remote-ish um, is going to be more beneficial. So think of some good stories that you've had to work on teams um, or work with groups. Another thing is autonomy. So um, I know that everybody might not be familiar with that word, but basically what it means is that you are capable of doing work without necessarily needing someone to always step in or somebody to tell you exactly what you need to do. You're, you're motivated by yourself. You can take initiative to um, start different projects, even if you haven't been given anything. So, you know, if you're in, great examples of this is, you know, when you're in your role, maybe you finished everything that you needed to finish for the week on Wednesday, and you decided that you were going to put together a proposal um, for a new initiative with, with, uh, your company or something like that um, can be a really great example of showcasing how you didn't wait for someone else to tell you what to do. You saw an area that that could potentially improve and you developed a strategy to address that. Um, those can be really great examples too. Um, and then your ability to meet goals with little oversight. So yeah, if, you, if you've been very um, independent in some of the projects that you've worked on. Maybe you've taken lead, you haven't needed m many resources, uh, you don't need your supervisor to come in and check everything, like you've really mastered that specific area. Those can be great examples to share with employers as well. So we talked about uh, communication, we talked about just past experiences in general, um, teamwork and autonomy, all of these are really great examples. Um, so just something to think about as you're preparing for interviews or thinking about what to put on your resume, think about the skills that are necessary first and prepare great stories and great examples around that. Um, we didn't talk too much about uh, things like time management because I think that that's a general skill that you should be able to showcase in general, but um, that's definitely something to think about as well as some of the other uh, skills that people mentioned, but these are kind of the top ones that I've seen employers really look for. T time management would probably be a, a runner-up for this list. So. Uh, um, that that's extremely important as well because you don't kind of sit between a certain amount of hours and expect it to get work done between that time. More often than not, you're either setting your schedule or given a list of tasks to work on for the week, and it's kind of up to you to, to accomplish those in your own time. So it is a lot more uh, flexible, but some of these skills you need to be really good at in order to um, succeed in, in these types of roles. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, application materials specifically. So one of the things that you'll want to do is, you know, w one thing that I like to encourage students to do is shift away from this kind of old school resume format where you just have bullet point after bullet point after bullet point listing out your job responsibilities. Um, where I've seen people have a lot more success is when you're able to showcase your impact working at an organization. So instead of saying, I oversee the department's social media page, you could say I've increased the Instagram following by 38% by creating engaging content and conducting free webinars or so, something like that as a way to showcase how you've actually 
benefited the company. Um, that's a great strategy to utilize for resumes in general. But when we're talking about remote positions, try to think about some of those um, impact statements or some of those experiences that you've had where you've made a great impact on your company, but also utilize some of the skills that are necessary to perform well in a, in a remote work environment. So maybe you took initiative to, to plan something new. Uh, you had to communicate with team members across departments or maybe in different cities. Uh, maybe you had to communicate with vendors to get food or, or something like that. Um, but share some of those really relevant successes um, in, your rele in your resume can be a great way to showcase to them up front that you have the skills to be successful before you even make it to uh, an interview round. Uh, we talked about highlighting important skills. Um, showcasing technology proficiency is important as well. So if you do have experience utilizing platforms like Slack, Zoom, Google Suites, Trello, Asana, um, Skype, uh, all these different these different resources that are, are, are there to help you with communication and collaboration um, can be really great to showcase there. Uh, one of the things that I think a lot of people forget about is, is online courses, and especially for, for you all as, as nano degree students, you understand the value of taking these courses and how they can contribute to your skill building. So don't be afraid to, you know, once you finish a, finish a nano degree program to sign up for courses that teach you better time management or teach you skills that are relevant to remote work so that you can include that on your resume and talk about that when it comes to, to your interview. Maybe you're not great with time management. So you decide to take a, a two hour time management course on a website like Udemy or Skillshare or whatever. Um, if you're asked a question in an interview about your time management skills, you could talk about that being an area where you noticed you needed to improve. And so you took upon an online course to help you get better at that. Um, that's just one example. Um, I actually completed a, an online certification program at the end of last year around leading remote teams. I see kind of remote working as the, the future um, and something that's gonna continue to grow. So for me as a professional, I wanted to get a jump on things and that certification alone may put me, uh, that may have me stand out compared to the other candidates because I've taken time to learn how to actually lead remote teams. So um, think about that as well and how you might be able to address these situations proactively. So if, if maybe communication is not an area where you feel strong, you can start building that skill set before it's time for you to answer those types of questions. Um, another thing to potentially share is your freelance work. I hadn't even realized it, but basically when I started to run my job or, or run my business, I was basically working remotely. I had clients from all over the country. I was helping people from back home, people I went to college with. I was sending them questionnaires that were very detailed for them to reply back with. Um, I was having phone calls and video chats for coaching sessions. And so that's something that you could also talk about as well. If you've done any freelance work or any entrepreneurial work, or maybe even just volunteering at, at, from a distance, um, those can be really great experiences to showcase throughout your application materials as well as through interviews. Another note that I mentioned here is to apply early because competition is very high. So as you all know, job searching is not fun. Um, usually, it's not fun usually, and it can be very difficult. And so comp competition for jobs in general can be very high, but for remote positions, it can be even higher because these are really I would call sexy jobs that people are really looking to, to land. Um, now they want the flexibility, they want to be able to work from home, they want all the benefits that come along with it. So with that comes a lot more competition, a lot more people that you have to beat out for these roles. So making sure that you are applying as early as possible because a lot of these companies are moving very quickly through that process. So let's talk a little bit about the interview process. So this is something that I share for interviews in general, so not just necessarily focused around remote positions, but prepare stories in advance. So you, some of you may have been in an interview where they ask you a question about uh, a lot of times they're behavior based questions. So they'll say, tell me about a time when blank or give me a situation in which you had to 
blank. Um, and so it's important for you to think about some of these things in advance so that you know what types of questions they might be asking and you can prepare stories that are closely related to what they're looking for. So you should have relevant stories and examples around being able to communicate well, um, potentially across distances or across offices. Uh, you should prepare stories about your ability to work on a team. You should be able to pre prepare stories about taking initiative and not necessarily needing um, too much input from a supervisor or from leadership. These are things that you can do in advance so that if you are asked the questions during the interview, you already kind of have them fresh in your mind. They shouldn't be rehearsed. Like it shouldn't be word for word memorizing a script, but you should kind of have taken time to plan out these responses. Maybe uh, write them down using the STAR method. Um, if you're not familiar with the STAR method, make a note of that to look that up on your free time. Um, we're not going to have time to cover that today, but it's a really helpful strategy as it relates to interviews, especially behavioral questions that are asking you to give them a specific example. So um, preparing relevant stories can be extremely beneficial. This next section I want to talk about is like, is one thing that most people don't think of, right? And definitely something that I didn't think of when I was early on in my, my job search for a remote job was being able to put yourself in an environment that is fitting for remote work. Um, especially if you're in an environment where you have, uh, if you're customer facing, you don't want to have, you know, your pets in the background making noise. You don't want to have, you know, children potentially in the house running around. And, and that is not a good look from an employer's perspective to see that there are potential distractions to you while you're working throughout the day. Um, a lot of people will say when they're asked why they want to work remotely so they can spend more time with their family. And while from a human perspective, that makes sense. But for a lot of people, what that really means is that their kids could potentially be in the house while they're working and that could potentially be a distraction. So we'll talk about that a little bit later, but making sure that you eliminate distractions. Um, another thing to talk about is having good lighting, especially if you're going to be either client facing or um, customer facing. If it's not gonna be so much that where you need to be visibly seen, then it's not as important. But if you are going to be on camera, very similar to where I am, it's important that you have good lighting. And so I have a, a little box light that I, that I purchased just because I knew I was gonna be doing work like this. Um, another thing to think about is equipment and software. So we talked about some of those things like Zoom, um, um, or Skype equipment like a headset. Um, I could just do this without my headset, but then you might be able to hear my dryer running or you might be able to hear the dog outside barking or something. So, you know, having a headset can sometimes just showcase to them that you're serious and that you're prepared for this type of role. Um, a strong internet connection is extremely important. Uh, you don't want your employer to have to worry about calls dropping or video chats lagging out or your screen sharing with customers to, to, to not succeed. And so making sure that you have a strong internet connection wherever you go. It doesn't necessarily have to just be at your house. As I mentioned, one co-working space that I, I've been to before, I know not to do webinars there because it does the, the connection's not always as stable and sometimes it'll drop. And so I tend to avoid that specific location. So knowing where you're going to have a strong connection is important. Um, and then this last one is just, I, I kind of jokingly say, but I'm serious, um, Starbucks is not an office. And so if you expect to go there and get work done every day, you're probably going to be a little bit distracted. Um, and that also means for you, if you are interested in remote positions, this is not a realistic expectation for you to have for yourself that you're just going to find a coffee shop to work from every day. That, that makes it very difficult for you to stay consistent, but also to eliminate distractions that are going on, especially if you're going to be on camera um, and you don't want to see people walking by and distracting that um, from that conversation or that call that you might be having. Um, and then lastly, just preparing for common questions. So one of the things that you'll often hear is, is related to some of those skills that we talked about, communication, time management, autonomy, um, teamwork, uh, but also just questions that are related to remote work, like why do you want to work remotely? That is a very common question that you'll get for these types of positions, regardless of the company, regardless of the position, why are you interested in working remotely? That question alone can sometimes determine whether or not you get the job. And so 
I want to hear from you all. I want to hear why do you want to work remotely? I saw some of you dropped it in the chat earlier, but I'm curious to know from others in the group, why are you interested in working remotely? I like working in my PJs. I do too. Um, there are some days where I'm not feeling up to it and I don't feel like getting all the way dressed. Sometimes I'll just throw on a hoodie and sweatpants and work in those for the rest of the day. Um, probably not a, an answer that you want to give to an employer, but I definitely understand. Um, what else? Why do you all want to work remotely? Why did you show up for this webinar? are today that should be kind of the same answer um, no traffic oh my goodness I love being able to avoid traffic I think you said you were in Miami and I lived there for two years so I definitely understand avoiding Miami traffic especially in the rain people can't drive in the rain um, <laughs> but here in Atlanta as well the traffic is pretty bad during certain times and so I like to avoid that um, I enjoy travel that is a, a great you know, personally, I, I think that's a great reason to want to, to wanna work remotely because if you know you can get your work done from anywhere and maybe you don't necessarily have the funds or the ability to just travel everywhere, travel anywhere without working, this can be a really great opportunity um, for you. Uh, commute, commute is often a lot of stress for me, I'm sure, um, especially when the buses are not as reliable, absolutely. Uh, this can be a huge time saver. I save so much money on gas. I save a lot of time on, you know, eliminating commutes. Um, but as I mentioned before, it also allows me to kind of run personal errands throughout the day as long as I'm not kind of like clocked in and I can just flex my hours the way I want to. Um, no distractions. So that's also a really great point. So sometimes people think working remotely, you know, would be a big distraction, like having the TV there, having your video games around or, or, or having, you know, your pets and different things like that. But what it can also do is eliminate some of those distractions that come with working in an office there. I, I don't. I, I, I don't remember being as productive when, when I worked in an office environment. There's probably, I probably would be able to get ha like most of my work done in the first half of the day if it wasn't for the students that were coming into my office and my coworkers that were jumping into my office or, you know, emails that I, were, that I was getting that didn't need to be, didn't need to happen or, or meetings meetings that didn't need to happen. Um, and so there can also be no distractions with, you know, working remotely. Um, I've been a freelancer for two years now, and and now I have like an office job. So, I mean, if you've been freelancing, you have some experience doing it. So I would really pull on that as you're interviewing. Um, I definitely understand like, you know, the differences between that and having an office job. I'll be honest with you all. Um, now that I have worked remotely, I don't see myself doing it full time. I think because I thrive so much around being in front of people and being around people, I would love to have a job that gives me the flexibility to do it, but didn't solely have me working remotely. Um, that's just a preference. Obviously, I, I could do it if the position was right. But for me, I like interacting with people face to face. I don't do well sitting in the house with a headset on all day. Um, and so that's why I oftentimes go to a co-working space. Uh, productivity increase, no distractions. Absolutely, like I mentioned before, I get so much work done even just in the early part of the day because I don't have those things going on. Uh, someone said, I don't like office jobs. I get that. I can see why people might feel that way. I can also see that you know, a, a, a number of office jobs in a row that weren't positive experiences could contribute to that as well. Um, so I think it oftentimes does depend on like the culture that's built around the office environment. Um, so I wouldn't completely rule out office jobs, but I definitely understand not liking them. Uh, less distractions. Yep. Uh, no traffic, more productivity. Absolutely. No commute. Remote work is more effective. I agree with all of these statements. Um, it's a great opportunity to plan and run side projects with no... Op Listen, that is a great one. Um, so getting to do different things while you're kind of not necessarily bound to an eight to five schedule. So there are some times, you know, with my own business where I'll have client meetings that need to happen in the middle of the day, which wouldn't necessarily be, I guess it would probably be kind of frowned upon in, in, in some work, work environments where you're doing unrelated things during business time, even if you work an hour later or work a couple of hours later, there can sometimes be some negative implications that come along with you doing things outside of work. And so I do love the flexibility of that.
Um, lack of job opportunities locally, absolutely. And then, ooh, that's tough. Lose four hours of traffic four hours on traffic every day. That alone is a good enough reason for me. So, okay. Thank you all for sharing some of those. So let's talk a little bit more about some common interview questions that you can kind of prepare for. We just talked about this a little bit, but this is something that you can expect to get. So um, one of the things I mentioned earlier is to try and avoid those um, responses that may be a little bit more for personal gain and try to focus more so on things like productivity or eliminating your commute, things that are going to help you just be a better all around person. And so one of the things that I would say, you know, some people will say, oh, I want to, I want to be able to spend time with my kids at home like that may not be a good response to some employers. For other people, they may be a little bit more open to it. But to some employers, that may be seen as a distraction that you're going to be like, babysitting and working at the same time, which may not come across very well. Um, so think about those things. Um, you know, productivity is really good. Eliminating your commute is really good. Um, talking about being able to do other things can depend on the company as well. There are some companies that aren't as open to hiring people who have their own businesses. That's just the reality of things. I, I love the fact that Udacity is open to me being able to pursue other projects. I'm also part-time with Udacity, so that plays into it as well well. Um, but thinking about those things and the way that you answer the question um, can somewhat determine the rest of the interview. So, so have a, a good response for that and be able to back it up with some, some, some evidence or some things that you can, maybe you say, um, I, I, I know that I'm more productive when I don't have distractions. When I'm allowed to work from home once a week, I get so much more done than when I'm in the office. That could be, you know, a great response right there alone. Um, okay, so let's move on. We, we've really talked about this topic a lot, but let's talk about this next question. Have you worked remotely before? So this question is similar to a lot of interview questions that you might get where you're asked about something. And I think a lot of people get caught up on answering the question so literally, and they think, well, I haven't had a remote job before, so I haven't worked remotely. And I want you to get out of that mindset and focus more so on being able to showcase experiences that you have that are more transferable. So as we talked about before, maybe you're allowed to work from home one day a week. Um, maybe you uh, have your own business and you've done that remotely. Maybe you volunteer for an organization that is um, you know, across your country or not necessarily centrally focused. Um, maybe you have to communicate with people in different um, countries or people in different cities for your job on a day-to-day -day basis. So share those experiences. Don't, don't hear this question and think directly, have I worked a remote job before? Um, think about experiences that you can share that are related to that. Um, this next question, how do you manage your time is a very common question for remote positions. And so you should be able to explain specific strategies that you use in order to manage your time. So for me, I, whether it's business, whether it's for work, whether it's personal, everything goes on my calendar. If it's not on my calendar, it's not likely that I'm going to, to make it or it's going to happen. Most of the time when I miss a meeting or miss an appointment or something like that is because it wasn't on my calendar. So I'll talk about how how I specifically use that. Um, I also have daily to-do lists that I create. Um, and I put those, I actually write those out on paper because it feels really good to cross it off. Um, but I, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about how I've utilized platforms like Slack, um, how I've utilized project management tools like Asana and like Trello as a way to manage my time as well as projects. So think about how you do that, but make sure that you're able to provide specific strategies related to this. And it's not just how do you manage your time? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I manage it well. <laughs> or you, you don't give specific examples that they can cling to. When you're going through the interview process, one of the best things that you can be is memorable. Um, it's, it's, it's almost necessary that the things that you're sharing are memorable. And one of the best ways to make yourself more memorable is to share stories. Um, that's just human psychology is it, when you tell stories, people are more likely to retain that information. And so if you can add to that question by talking about a time when you managed your time really well, that can just add to your credibility as it relates to that specific question. Um, and then as we mentioned very briefly before, you're, this is for in interviews in general, but also for remote positions, you may, you're likely to get some behavioral questions. And what I mean by behavioral, it's also called 
behavior based or situation based. Um, they'll ask you for a specific time or a specific situation um, when you had to do a, a specific thing that's probably going to be related to that job. So some of those questions may be describe a time when the boss was away or worked with little supervision or worked with distributed or non-local teams. And so being able to prepare stories in advance will allow you to perform really well in interviews where these types of questions are asked. Um, another thing that you could do is just Google um, common remote interview questions or common behavior-based questions for remote jobs. Um, obviously, this is not a comprehensive list, uh, but you may get other questions that are somewhat related, but being able to have those stories prepared, it one kind of helps you so you're not stuck and sitting there thinking for a really long time, but it's also a great opportunity for you to prepare some of your most impressive examples in advance. I know all of us can probably relate to a situation where you left an interview and you're like, man, I wish I would have talked about that one event that I put on, or I really wish I would have talked about this. Preparing those stories in advance will allow you to be able to utilize your best examples and not necessarily have that regret of missing out on some of those if you are able to kind of pull them into the, the interview. And so I don't want people to get caught up on what questions am I going to get asked. You can think about some of those, but really preparing those stories allows you to adapt in that situation. So if if somebody asked me to describe a time when the boss was away, I could probably share a, a, an example where it answers all three of these different questions. So once again, it's better for you to prepare the story in advance than to be worried about all of the questions that they're going to ask. It's good for you to take some time to review the job description critically and see what questions might they ask, but worry more about the stories that you have that are relevant to your success of working remotely. Um, here, just a couple of other things to consider. Um, remote working is a skill. So if you've never done it and you start doing it and you realize that you're not good at it, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not meant to work remotely. Um, it could, which is our next point, that it's not for everybody, but it is a skill that you need to develop. It's a, it's a way for you to learn how to do something different. Um, so for me, one of the things that I would say is even a challenge of mine is, you know, with Udacity, I understand that a lot of students, even some of you all, English is not your first language. And I know that for me, I have a tendency to speak really quickly um, and trying to help students get the most out of their coaching sessions or to get the most out of webinar uh, content. And so for me, I've had to really work on speaking more slowly um, with certain students, but also being on top of my uh, organization. So for me, you know, we, we put together proposals and that's really helped me develop that skill in general of just being more organized. And so that could be another thing that you talk about when someone asks you why you want to work remotely, you can say something like, you know, being, um, being able to work with people uh, that aren't local has been a challenge of mine in the past, and I'm really excited to, to learn the skills that are necessary to perform well in a role like this. Um, so that could be something that you talk about if they ask you about a challenge. Um, maybe not necessarily why do you want to work remotely and then talk about you're not great at it. Um, maybe <laughs> share a different example, and then if they ask you about a challenge, you could talk about something specific that relates to remote working that you've actually been trying to um, improve. Don't just say I'm getting better at it or I'm working on it, give specific examples of how you've done that. But then, yeah, just lastly, um, it is, it's not for everybody. Um, I think that everybody can do it, but I think once you get in an experience where you're allowed to work remotely, you'll start to see the pros and cons for you specifically. As I mentioned, for me, I don't struggle too much with uh, time management. I don't struggle too much with collaboration or communication. My big thing is more so kind of that, that loneliness and wanting to be around other people and wanting to work with teammates and wanting to put on events in person and doing those things. So for me, I know that I can do it and I know that I enjoy doing it, but that I don't want to do it completely 100% remotely for the rest of my life. Um, so it's just something to think about. Obviously, getting in and having that experience is going to help you better decide um, if it is for you or not, but it's still something to consider if you find yourself um, questioning some of these things and maybe realizing that it's not the best decision for you. Okay, so now we have exactly 10 minutes. So if you want to, if you have questions, um, feel free to type them in the chat. Or if you'd like, you can unmute yourself, uh, turn on your camera, we can have some real uh, dialogue. But if you have any questions that 
you know, you were hoping to gain, but I didn't talk about, or maybe something I mentioned that isn't 100% clear to you just yet, um, feel free to ask any of those questions that you have right now, and I'll share to my best ability some answers and some personal experiences. Okay, good. We have one. Will the recording be available for viewing later? Absolutely. Um, I made sure to record this time. Um, but yes, definitely that'll be uh, access, accessible. Um, once the recording is processed, I'll send it to our team so they'll upload it on YouTube. Um, so it will be there on YouTube with the other webinars that we've done in the past. So if you if this is your first webinar, you're not used to how the Career Teams does webinars, we have an entire playlist on the Udacity uh, YouTube page. So if you found this helpful and you wanna check out some of the other ones that we've done, I highly encourage you do that. Um, just at least take a look. Even if you don't watch any, just go and see if any of those relate to your situation and you can watch them. They're very similar to this one. But yeah, great question. Any, any other questions? Feel free to drop them in the chat or unmute your mic. Okay. Uh, my backdrop for video chats is my living room. Should I build some kind of blank backdrop like you have or is the living room okay? So funny enough, I'm actually in my bedroom um, sitting on my bed. <laughs> so I also don't necessarily have an ideal place just yet. And so this is just my wall. Um, so it kind of looks a little bit more professional than it actually is. But I would say if you can just find something that eliminates distractions or um, is, a, is a blank wall or something like that, I think that that's okay. Um, I think sometimes it depends on the, the situation. So for a lot of you, if you do get a remote job, you're not going to be customer or client facing. So I don't think that it's that extremely important for everyone. Um, but if you have an interview, maybe just go to the public library for that. Um, or go to a co-working space for that, or somewhere that has a more uh, more appropriate background, um, because that's okay if you do it for your interviews, but not while you're actually working, depending on the types of um, work that you're gonna be doing, like I said, if it's customer or client facing. Uh, thank you, absolutely. Is there a sample resume available for people seeking remote jobs? So unfortunately, we don't have a sample resume specifically for remote jobs. I would say, that it's not too different from the general resume um, advice that I would normally give, which is that your resume should be more future focused in terms of what is the position that I want and how can I showcase what I've done in the past that will appeal to those specific needs. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have necessarily anything uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't probably co create like a sample or a, a template for that because I would use the same strategies. It's like I said, mostly about being able to showcase how what you've done in the past relates to what you want to do in the future. Uh, other question, if we get references of where to find and apply to remote jobs from you, that will be okay. Um, so there, there aren't any specific ones that I like use on a regular basis. I know of we work remotely is one. Um, Angel List is one that oftentimes hires remote jobs for startups. Uh, I would just I would just do a, a Google search. Um, there's like I said I I've not used those to get remote jobs in the past. Um, it's been more so through like applying for them on LinkedIn or something like that. But I think that those are great resources because those will show you a lot of the companies that are heavily remote focused. And then from there, you can probably create a job search strategy about connecting with employees at that company. Uh, but yeah, I would say there aren't any specific ones that I absolutely go to or love. So I would just do your own research as it relates to those job boards. Um, as I mentioned before, those jobs are gonna be extremely competitive. And so applying for those jobs online is not going to always be effective because you're gonna be competing with hundreds of people. So sometimes doing your research in advance, maybe looking at those websites to see who's often hiring and then taking that to a platform like LinkedIn to search for their employees and try to connect with them um, as a way to build relationships with, with people at the companies that hire remotely. Uh, but that's a different topic. Um, if you wanna learn more about that, you can definitely schedule a coaching session. We'll talk about creating a strategy about around applying for specific companies. Um, but yeah, in general, I would just say do, do a, a, a Google search um, because these, these, it's hard for us to provide students with specific resources. Um, oftentimes because 
we speak to a global audience. So as you could see, if you joined at the very beginning, our students come from all over the world and hiring standards and expectations are very different around the globe. And so it's hard for us to provide resources that are universal or, or, or strategies that work everywhere. And so a lot of times students need to be able to do that research on their own uh, because you know after you're no longer a Udacity student, you need to have those skills that we're here to teach you now so that you can be more independent later. So I would definitely encourage you to check that out because it depends on where you're located as well. Yeah, any other questions? If you already have a full-time or part-time job but want to keep it for a while, does it sound good to mention it for applications? So I think it depends on the position that you're applying for. So if you have a full-time job and you're applying for a remote job that's full-time, that may be a little bit of a conflict. Um, but I would say as long as it's as long as it's not going to impact the schedule, I think that you, you'll be okay. I know if I was to get a full-time job, I would love to keep this, I would, I would still keep this job with Udacity part-time. Um, so that's one thing to mention is like, you know, you don't have to do one or the other. You can have an in-person job and work part-time remotely, maybe after hours or on weekends, um, but you just have to make sure that your schedule is going to allow it. Um, I think that it, you you definitely want to to mention your experience, especially if it's relevant, especially if some of the experiences that you're going to be sharing about is from your current position. So I think it's a case by case basis, um, but the most important thing is for you to make sure that your schedule allows it. Um, any risk of applying for a remote job? like personal detail going into the wrong hands. Um, I think that there, there's always gonna be risk with that if you don't do your research on the back end to kind of learn and understand that company. Um, especially when people utilize sites like Indeed, uh, there's not a whole lot of barrier to entry for you if you wanted to create a job. And so that's why I usually recommend that if people are using job search sites like that, um, don't put your resume or don't put your like full address on your resume. Do your research of the companies that you're applying for because, you know, really anybody for the most part can go on those sites and create a job um, if that, you know, if they allow it and just collect resumes to get personal information. So don't try to put your full address on your resume in general. Um, but I think that there's always that risk. And so if you do your research up front, you should be able to decide whether or not they're like a more reputable company. Uh, let's see. I once recorded a video conference that I was hosting, communicating some concept. I was surprised by the quirks I displayed that I wished I hadn't. I can see how practicing video chat interviews. Yeah, um, I, I think that it's definitely something you get used to. When I was doing my first, second, third, fourth webinar, um, I was definitely very, very nervous about the technical the potential technical difficulties. For me, I've been teaching and presenting for as long as I've been coaching. And so for me, it's nothing for me to get up and teach something. But I was worried about how am I going to monitor the chat? What if the connection is bad? What if, you know, students are screaming in the background and I don't know how to mute them? For me, it was a lot about being more comfortable utilizing Zoom and utilizing the, the, the technical tools um, for me to feel a lot more confident. Like with, with this web. Webinar, I, you know, was ready to go within a matter of like 10 or 15 minutes because I've been doing it for a year at this point. And so I definitely see your, your concerns and potential worries about um, that aspect of things. Um, but it, it, as with anything, you're only going to get better and more confident with practice. So don't stress it. It happens to all of us, especially in the early stages. Um, okay, so thank you all so much for attending. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope you all gained something, at least learned one thing, or at least learned how to better present yourself for these types of roles. Um, stay active in the, the careers channels in the student hub. Uh, we oftentimes post tips each career coach is assigned a week where they put five different tips throughout the week. Uh, we also have our office hours or our career hotline where we are there and present for an entire hour out of the week. And so if you have any quick questions or questions related to your career, feel free to drop those um, there. But if you have any questions in general regarding the, the, the careers um, offerings or anything that maybe I wasn't able to touch on today, feel free to email career-support at udacity.com. They're there to assist you um, with any kind of questions that, 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 we might not be able to answer in the, in the webinar today. Um, also, if you want to talk specifically with a coach, 
please, please schedule one-on-ones with us. This is what we are here to do. We are here to help you all in terms of your, your career planning and your career goals. Um, there's only so much that we can do in group settings. There, you, know, you all have specific situations. You all have unique backgrounds. And sometimes it just takes you speaking directly to somebody who has experience in the industry to be able to put you in the right direction. So I would say schedule career coaching um, sessions with us, but also please, please, please at least check Check out that career webinars playlist. Um, all you have to do is go to YouTube and type in Udacity, go to their channel, and then you'll see the career webinars playlist. And we've been doing these consistently for about a year. And so there's a ton of content on there around creating a, a, a pitch. Um, there's two that I did there on LinkedIn. There's one that I did at the new year about creating a job search strategy. There are others around avoiding procrastination and addressing resume gaps. So most of the webinar topics that we're coming up with are not pulled straight out of our head. These are common issues that we're seeing from Udacity students. So if I have four coaching calls next week that talk about the same exact thing that we don't have a webinar about, I'll create it around that topic. And so those webinars are extremely relevant for the issues that you'd ask these students are ex experiencing. So please do check those out. Um, and, and they, sh they're going to be as helpful as this one, hopefully, um, in, in terms of your specific situation and what you're looking for. So thank you all again for attending. Um, as I mentioned, once uh, we're done sh uh, with this presentation, it's going to be recorded and uploaded to that same YouTube uh, playlist. And so if you want to come back to it, or you just enjoyed watching me speak so much that you want to watch it again, um, it'll be there as well. But thank you all for attending. I really appreciate your participation through the chats, um, asking great questions, providing great perspectives. And I hope to see you all again soon for our next uh, webinar. So thank you all again.